Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am a crochet designer and business strategist here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable chicken amigurumi. It is unbelievably simple, perfect for beginners. If you are not comfortable or familiar with a lot of amigurumi patterns before, this one is really, really good for beginners. The only things that you have to sew on is the beak and the comb. I had to Google that. Um, but they're really simple. There's not any shaping. There's not any stuffing of the things that you have to sew on. Um, so it's a great pattern for beginners. And it's also perfect because spring is just around the corner. And I don't know what I love more than spring coming right after winter, especially in the middle of a pandemic. So I am excited for spring. Wanted to release a cute spring chicken in celebration. Let's look at all of the things you're going to need to make one of these cuties yourself. Here is what I will be using to make a chicken amigurumi today. By the way, this is called the Doxy Chicken. And if you want to hear the story behind the name, it's on the blog post that goes with this pattern. I will link it in the description below. But these are all of the supplies I will be using. I'm going to use Dishy Worsted Weight Cotton for this Doxy Chicken. I'm using Dishy to make Doxy, okay? Um, this is the color Pomegranate. This is the color Linen. And this is the delicious color Creme Brulee. Um, you will need three different colors, one for your body, one for your beak and feet, and one for your comb. Um, you will also need a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. This one is Clover More brand, which is my favorite hook brand to work with. Highly recommend it. You will need three sewing pins to help you attach the beak and the comb. You will need a tapestry needle, a pair of safety eyes, the pattern calls for 15 millimeter safety eyes. I didn't have any of those, so I will just be using these smaller ones because that's what I had on hand. A pair of scissors and a stitch marker. We are going to start with our chicken feet. So you're gonna need your feet color yarn. For me, it's the creme brulee. It's like a mustard yellow color. And your F crochet hook. And I set my stitch marker here too because I'm probably going to have to use it. This is going to be made working in the round, which means it's continuous. We do not join and chain up one. We just go in a continuous spiral. So we're going to start by making a magic circle and single crocheting six times into the center of our magic circle. So insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, grab our yarn, pull through two. That's one, two, three four, five, six. You may notice that I crochet a little different than you. I will explain that in the next row. Um, we're going to pull our tail to close up our circle. That's why it's magic. Now for round two, we're going to increase one time in each stitch all the way around, giving us a total of 12 stitches. Like I said, we're working in the round, so I'm just going to go straight into the top of my first single crochet and place my single crochet increase right there. Okay. So, single crochet. And single crochet. That's one. We're gonna do that five more times, giving us a total of 12 stitches. One, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my stitch marker here so I can talk and crochet at the same time and explain why I do my stitches the way that I do. You may notice that I yarn under instead of the traditional yarn over. This is just how I taught myself how to crochet. I didn't know it was even a thing until like 2019. Um, I do know that it gives, makes the finished piece a smidge smaller and it gives the single crochets a bit of a twisted look instead of a nice V shape on the front of it. I'll show you. You can probably tell that they're a little bit twisted. Um, apparently it's good for amigurumi because it makes your stitches a little bit tighter, but if you want to single crochet by yarning over, that's totally fine. This is just how I do it. Personal preference. Only thing is, is your finished piece might be a bit bigger than mine if you yarn over. And it's just really subtly different. So not a big deal, personal preference. Now we are going to do round three. I'm going to insert my stitch marker again. For round three, we're going to single crochet increase in the first stitch. One. 
one, two, and then we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. I'm going to repeat that for a total of six times. So I've got five more times. One, two, and then a single crochet. That's two. One, two, then a single crochet. That's three. And this is going to give us a total of 18 stitches in the round. Four, five, and then one more time, and we're back at our stitch marker. One, two, and six. Okay, insert our stitch marker, get ready for round four, and we are going to single crochet increase in the first stitch. So, two single crochets together in the first stitch, and then we're going to single crochet, single crochet. So single in the next stitch, then single in the next stitch. That's our repeat for this round. Increase, single, single. Repeat that for a total of six times, giving us a total of 24 stitches in the round. Single, single, increase, single, single. Increase, single, single, last one. I'm going to go ahead and remove my stitch marker. Increase, single, single. Okay, for, a row, for rounds five and six, we are just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around, giving us a total of 24 stitches in the round. And then after we finish round six, we're going to switch to our body color. So I'm going to do rounds five and six really quickly off screen. And then I will come back and show you how to add your body color yarn. Okay, I just finished round six. I have one more single crochet to do in the round. So I'm going to insert my hook, grab my yarn and pull up a loop. Then I'm going to set that down and grab my body color. For me is the dishy in the color linen. Okay, so I found my center pole here. Now I'm going to grab the linen and finish out my stitch. And I'm gonna put a stitch marker right here in that spot so I know where the end of my row, round is. Now for rounds, so that was one through six. For rounds seven through 13, we will be using our body color. So I'm going to do rounds 7 13 through 13 off camera because it's literally just single crochets all the way around and then moving up your stitch marker. After I finish round 13, I will come back on camera and tie off and sew in my tail so you guys can see how I do that. I'm excited to see how this dishy works up. Sorry, I forgot to mention you can go ahead and clip your feet color now. You, you won't be using that anymore, so you can go ahead and clip that off. Okay, be right back. Okay, I just finished round 13. I am going to slip stitch into the next stitch right here. And then I'm going to cut my yarn and tie off. Okay, my first chicken leg is finished. I can take this out. Okay, now we're going to sew in our tails and go ahead and get that out of the way. Especially this one. If you just knot these two and stuff them in there, I'm not going to judge you. Let's use our tapestry needle. Okay. And I like to just run my tapestry needle under the magic circle we did at the very beginning. Just to kind of secure the magic circle, but also to hide the tail in a way that it doesn't get seen. Like create weird lines or anything like that. Okay, and then I can tie off. And for these guys, I'm literally going to knot them together and be the worst crocheter in the world and not sew them in because I'm lazy. There we go. Who bet nobody's going to know? Flip it right side out 
and you have your first little chicken leg. Now we're going to repeat all of these steps for our second chicken leg, but we're not gonna cut our yarn this time. We're going to keep it attached to our body color because we're gonna continue going up. Whoa continue going up and creating the body of our chicken. So I'm gonna repeat rounds one through 13. Do not cut off your tail and I will be right back. Okie dokie, just finish rows one, rounds one through 13 of my ch second chicken leg. And now we are gonna get started on round 14, which is gonna be the first round of our body. I'm going to single crochet 24. So one more round, like you're making another round on the chicken leg. This is the second leg, the one that's still atta attached to my yarn. If you notice all of my frogged yarn over there, that's because I already filmed this whole thing and didn't realize that I was filming when I thought I wasn't filming and I wasn't filming when I thought I was filming because um, apparently I don't know how to work an iPhone. Okay, finish 24 stitches for the start of round 14. I'm gonna leave that stitch marker there and you will see why in a moment. Now we are going to grab our first leg and insert a slip stitch into the slip stitch we did at the end of round 13 for our first leg. So here was the, our last stitch was right here. And then we slip stitched into the next space. We're going to slip stitch into that slip stitch so I'm gonna insert my hook, grab my working yarn, and pull through both nice and tight, keeping everything nice and tight. Okay, and now we're going to single crochet 24 around this leg. We're gonna put our first single crochet in the same stitch where the original slip stitch was. So we slip stitched into a slip stitch, and now we're going to single crochet in that same spot where the original slip stitch was. That's one. We're gonna go around for 24 single crochets. Two, three, four, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay, so we have 48 stitches in the round, 24 and 24. Now we're going to sink, slip stitch into the same space as our 24th single crochet from over here. So we're gonna put a slip stitch into that space where the other stitch is, where our stitch marker is. That's why I left the stitch marker there. I'm gonna pull it nice and tight and place a nice tight slip stitch, keeping everything all snug and together. Now you can take out that stitch marker. Okay, and now after I've got everything nice and tight, I'm going to chain one to hold it all in place. Now let's take a look at what we've got. These are our two chicken legs and we are ready for our body, we just finished round 14. And you can see there's very minimal holing here, hole situation between attaching the two legs. There's a smidgen of a hole right there and you can use this tail to kind of whip stitch that closed if you want to. I think it's fine, I'm just gonna leave it there and I'm going to insert a stitch marker into the last single crochet that I made. That's gonna be my 48th single crochet. I'm gonna get ready for round 15 where I'm gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 48 stitches. I'm gonna repeat that for rounds 15 through 31. I'm gonna do 15 with you here on camera because the stip slip stitches can, can make it a little bit funky. We're gonna start not in the same spot where we sl just slip stitched, but right next to that. That's where our first single crochet is gonna go. And we're going for 48 single crochets because 24 and 24 equals 48. That's one, two, three, Twenty three and twenty four. Now I am not going to place a stitch in that slip stitch right there. I'm going to place a stitch in the next space. The slip stitches are just to keep everything nice and tight. Right here, this is where twenty my twenty fifth single crochet is going to go. Twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, forty two, forty three. 44, 45, 46, 47, take out my stitch marker, 
then 48 and then put my stitch marker back on okay that was round 15 so 16 through 31 to complete our body just to show you one more time this would be the last time that this is a, an issue and then you won't have to worry about it no more but this right here is a slip stitch so the first stitch in round 16 is going to go here not here these are this is the slip stitch so we're going to go all the way over here for our first stitch in round 16 pull it nice and tight that's one single crochet 48 stitches all the way around for rounds 16 through 31 and then I will come back on camera with you guys we will place our chicken eyeballs and then start stuffing them a little bit and then doing our decreases to kind of round off the top of the head so I will see you guys back here after completing round 31. Okie dokie, I just finished rounds all the way through 31. This is what we have at this point. Now we are going to add our safety eyes. Now these need to go approximately between rows 28 and 27. So I'm going to count back from 31, 30, 29, 28. And 27 so we're gonna go about right here this area to put our eyes and you want them to be centered with the front of your stuffy so you could add some polyfill here if you want him to go ahead and be shapely I'm just gonna like give him some shape right now to kind of pretend like he's got polyfill in there adding polyfill would probably be better Okay, fine, I'll add polyfill. I'm not gonna add a lot because this is all I have at my reach. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in some polyfill so he can start getting his shape on. And that way his legs are spaced out properly before I add his eyes so his eyes can be in the center. And I do have a, a little trick I used for how to find the center and I will show you that here in a second. Just putting some polyfill up between both of his legs. And now I'm just now realizing I forgot to say polyfill at the beginning of the video. Lord have mercy. Get it together, man. Get it together. Okay, so that's what we have so far. It doesn't have to be perfect just yet because we're just filling him in so we can put our eyes in. So now we've got to find between rows 28 and 27 again. 31, 30, 29, 28, 27. So right here ish. Okay. I'm going to pop a pin in right there so we don't have to count that again. That way we know where it's at. Now I'm going to show you how I use some scrap yarn to find the center ish. Just go like this. That helps me keep it lined up. Look like it's pretty going straight up this way it helps me it might not help you it might it's not an exact science it helps me so I'm gonna put one eye right here and then I'm just gonna eyeball it <laughs> and see how that looks when I pull my stream well, that's pretty spot on let's get that out of there so it's not distracting pretty symmetrical one two three four five six single crochets between them the last one I did had five single crochets between them but that one is pretty pretty stuck at six so we're gonna go with six this time this one just had five and I like how they look but um this one's telling me six maybe it's because it's different yarn or something I don't know we're gonna go with six go ahead and pop on the backs of your safety eyes okay and the next one Okay, and then now we have our little chicken eyes, and we're getting ready to start decreasing around the tops. So round 32, we're going to single crochet six and then a decrease. So one, sorry, two, three, four, five, 
six, and then we're going to do a decrease, and I do an invisible decrease to make it nice and clean. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that now, in case you don't know. You insert your hook under the front loop of the first stitch of the, de of the decrease, just the front loop, and then whip your hook around and pick up the front loop of the next stitch of your decrease, and then you place your single crochet there. That's called the invisible decrease. Whoa. Okay, now we're going to single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to decrease again. We're going to repeat this all the way around, single crochet six, decrease, single crochet six, decrease, until we are back to our stitch marker. So I will be one, two, right back, three, four, five, six, after I finish the rest of my single crochet six, and then decrease. Okay, I just single crocheted six, and now I have my decrease left. It's the last two stitches. And that's where I will put my stitch marker. Now for round 33, we're going to single crochet five times this time and then decrease. So the previous round was single crochet six and a decrease. This one is five. So one, two, three, four, five, and a decrease. There we go. Repeat that all the way around and I'll be right back. Okay, for the next round, we are going to single crochet four and then a decrease. So, one, two, three, four, and then a decrease. Repeat that all the way around, ending on a decrease. Okay, I just finished the round and now I'm going to add some more stuffing inside of my chicken before we get ready for our next round, which is going to be single crochet three times and then a decrease. I hope you're picking up on the on the repeats here. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Close her up. That's what we'll be doing. Spoiler alert. I like making amigurumi with cotton yarn because it doesn't stretch as much and it doesn't need as much stuffing. Seems like when you make it with acrylic yarn, you could just stuff it for days as much as you wanted to. And I'll add a little bit more after the next round. So we're going to single crochet three times and then a decrease. We are almost finished. One, two, three. Decrease. I'll meet you back at the beginning. Three, and then we've got a decrease. For the next round, we're going to single crochet two, and then a decrease. All the way around. Single crochet, single crochet, decrease. Single crochet, single crochet, decrease. All the way around. We are almost done. Single. Sometimes the stuffing gets in your way. Single decrease. Repeat that all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to add some more stuffing just to top him off. Right now, he kind of looks like a chicken nugget. Maybe I just need to go eat some dinner, but that's what I'm thinking. I'm getting chicken nugget vibes. Like chicken nugget with a face. That ought to do it for the stuffing. Now we are going to single crochet decrease, single crochet decrease all the way around. And I'll just do this whole thing on camera because it's not going to take very long. Shouldn't take very long, I should say. Single crochet. Decrease. Single crochet.
decrease. Now the last round on the pattern says to decrease all the way around. I'm just going to do it a couple times and then I'm just going to close the circle up. I'll show you how I do that. Decrease. I'm not going to do every single hole, every single stitch. So that's one. Decrease. Two, decrease, and that's probably going to be all that I do. Three, and then I'm going to cut my tail, leaving it long enough to sew. So I'm just going to pull that all the way through, and it should hold the stitch. Okay, now I'm going to use my tapestry needle and do the magic close or whatever it is it's called. And all we're going to do is pick up the first loop, just the front loop front loop, loop it around, front loop, and then pull through. Do that all the way around. So under the front loop, whip it, front loop, whip it, front loop, and then pull it. Okay. Under, oh gosh, sorry. I know that's super annoying. I don't know why my phone's not automatically adjusting. It's supposed to. And then pull it tight and it's kind of like a magic circle and then I'm just going to run my tapestry needle through the stitches a little bit more okay and I found that this way makes it a little bit better to not have the little knot on the top of your head I know in the Ava bunny uh, video I talked about struggling with that and that just makes it a little easier for me now I'm going to continue to sew in my tail and then tie off, do that off camera, and then I'll come back and we will make our beak. All right, now let's set our little chicken nugget over here to the side so we can make our beak using the yellow yarn that you used for your feet. Mine is called creme brulee. I just like saying that. And we are gonna start by chaining seven. So we're gonna just make a slip knot and chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we're gonna half double crochet back down. I like to put them in the back bumps. That's not absolutely necessary. So I'm going to skip the chain closest to my hook, yarn over, insert my hook. This is the back bump. It's on the back side of your chain stitches. I'm gonna place my single, my half double crochet there. That's one. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to chain one and turn our work. Now we're going to half double crochet decrease over the first two, half double crochet, half double crochet, and then half double crochet decrease over the last two, giving us a total of four half double crochets in the row. So yarn over, insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert our hook in the next stitch, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all of them. Honestly, that might be a double crochet. Let me try that again. So we're going to go yarn over, insert, grab our yarn, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all. Y'all, I really should Google that. Sometimes it's just like if I let muscle memory. Okay, that's how we're gonna do it. Then half double crochet, half double crochet, and then another half double crochet decrease. So yarn over, insert, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, insert, grab up a loop, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all of them. I don't know if that's absolutely correct, Honestly, for this pattern, it doesn't matter if you want to do the correct half double crochet, totally fine with me. Chain one and turn our work. Now we're gonna half double crochet decrease over both sets of stitches here. So we'll have two half double crochets in this round row. That time I did it different. It really doesn't matter. You're just making a triangle. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three, <laughs> chain one and turn. And then we're going to end with one half double crochet decrease over these two stitches. And that is our nose. Now we're going to cut our yarn, leaving a long tail for attaching our nose to our chicken. And I'm going to go ahead and sew in this tail first. Then I'll come back and we will pin this puppy down onto our chicken and attach it. Okay, sewn in my first tail. This is my little chicken beak. Kind of looks like a Dorito. Now we're going to attach it to our chicken nugget. Let's give it some shaping so it is triangular shaped using my safety pins, my sewing pins. And I like to just pin it. So I pin it into this row right here. But then my stitches go into this row and I'll show you that when I when I start doing it. So skip this row right under the eyes and go into this one and that's where we're going to pin it at. And my eyes are six stitches apart and this thing is six stitches wide so it should be pretty easy to line them up. Okay now the top of the beak is going to want to curve Whenever we sew it down, we just want to make sure we kind of maneuver it and make it go straight so it's not curved across the top. And then our last sewing pin will go down here at his tippy of his nose or his beak right between the center of his person. Okie dokie, now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and sew this baby on using a whip stitch. I think that's what it's called. It's very simple. We're just gonna go into the body, right up next to the beak, and then up through the beak. And then we're gonna pull through. Into, then we're gonna move up a little bit, go into the body of our bird, and then up in through the beak, pull it through. We're gonna do this all the way around and then, our, then we can tie off and it will, this will have his little beak. I don't know if you guys can hear that banging in the background, but my husband decided to retile our shower today. So that's all that if you can hear it. Okay, now we're up to the corner. So I'm just gonna go kind of right here, I think, and then grab Grab the corner and get rid of this and pull it taut. Okay, now I'm gonna go across the top and I'm gonna be put inserting my, when I go into the body, it's gonna be in that row just under my eyes. The one that we skipped before we pinned it down and then into the beak. Okay. Very simple. I'm going to do this all the way around and then I will come back and we can tie off together. Okay, finished attaching my beak. Now I'm just going to tie off down here at the bottom. Go into the bird, up into the beak. And then I'm just going to put my needle into the loop that's created and pull it through so it kind of gets knotted a little bit and then kind of do that just a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm going to go into the body, back up through the beak just to help me pull that knot to where it's really under there and then into the body and I'll probably push it out the back over here. And hide the tail in the body. Now, if you pull tight and then cut this off, it will shoot down into there and disappear like magic. And then you just do a little reshaping. He's looking less and less like a chicken McNugget and more like a little chick, a little spring chicken. Okay, now we need to make his comb or his chicken mohawk, if you will. We will be using our reddish color yarn. Mine is called pomegranate. 
and you may need your stitch marker for this too. It is made in the round. I'm gonna start by making a magic circle again, but this time we're going to single crochet seven times into the center, not six like we did previously. So single crochet seven times into the center of your magic circle. One, two, and seven. Pull your magic circle closed. Get all your stitches nice and lined up. Now we're going to single crochet in, increase in each stitch around, giving us a total of 14 single crochets. So increase one, two, that's one. One, two, that's two. We're going for seven. I hope you guys can see this. This color is kind of dark. One, two, that's three, four, six, and seven. Now we have 14 stitches in our round. I'm going to place my stitch marker and we're going to do rounds three through eight, just single crocheting one time in each stitch all the way around three through eight. And that will be our entire comb. And we're going to make three of these. You're going to re want to rewatch this video and make three of these total. This is round three. And I'm going to move up my stitch marker and I'm going to do rounds four through eight off camera and I will be right back. Okay, just finished round eight. Now I'm going to slip stitch into this next space. Really hope you can see this. This dark red was not a good choice, I am aware. And now I'm going to cut my tail, leaving a long enough tail for sewing it on to the top of my chicken. Go ahead and sew in your starting tail on all of your comb pieces, and then we will come back and attach them to our chicken head. Okay, now that we have all three pieces of our chicken comb, or mohawk as I like to call it, it's time to attach them. So to do this, we are going to squish it so, so like it's made like this, right? We're gonna squish it so it's like this. And I like for my tail to be on the back end. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Now I'm going to line this up onto my chicken head down here, kind of leaning in towards the forehead a little bit. And I'm gonna use a pin to hold it still right there. And then kind of look at it and make sure that's centered, see if it needs any adjusting. Look how cute he is. It looks like it's a little off. Just a smidgy. Okay, and then we are going to take this back piece and aim it towards the back center of our chicken. And put a pin. Just like that. Now we're going to use this tail and whip stitch it up making sure to go through both sides of the comb and then come back. So it's like double, double stitched on there. Using my tapestry needle. So just like the whip stitch that we did to attach it this way, we're gonna do that back here. We're gonna start by going into the body of our chicken. Just to kind of anchor it down. Just like that and then we're going to go back in through the comb making sure to get both sides of the piece okay so pull through okay back into the body of our chicken just like that I can't tell if it's blurry for you guys. I won't be able to tell until I'm editing and it's too late, but hopefully it's not. It's very dumb that it won't autofocus. Okay, 
and then we're going to go back through the comb just like that until we get the whole thing sewn on and then we'll come all the way up and then go back a little bit and then tie off and hide your tail in the body of this thing and then we'll add the other two using our pins all in the same method. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. I'll come back and we will add the second one. Okay, I'm about halfway back down attaching my comb. Now I'm going, I think it should be called a mohawk. I'm going to insert back through here like I was getting ready to do another whip stitch. But instead, when I get over here, I'm going to tie off by creating a little knot down here. And double knotting it. And then I'm going to hide my tail in the center of this guy, like between the two sides of it. So up in that hollow space. It kind of looks like a chicken unicorn right now. Chick chicken unicorn. Chicken unicorn. Clip this off. Make sure it's falling down in there nicely and get ready to add on the next one. So there's our first little chicken comb mohawk. The next one is going to be added on the same exact way. We're going to first smoosh it and make sure our tail is to the back. We're going to use our pins to add it button right up against the end of the first one. We kind of want them to overlap a little bit, like I mean just the stitches. So there's no gap in between them. I didn't do a perfect job on this chicken. There's a little bit of gaps between them. Ideally, they would um, be touching a little bit. Now we're going to aim this puppy towards the back center. That's what it's telling me. Let's do that and then look at it before we start. How's it looking? Pretty good. Pretty straight. And then I will attach this one just the same way as I attached this one. And then I will do the third one the same way that I did both of these. So this is what we're going for. He kind of looks like a little chicken dinosaur. I was going from like the chicken little cartoon for my inspiration. I think it's cartoony and fun that he kind of looks like a chicken dinosaur. I like it. But I'm going to sew on both of these off camera and then we will come back talk about dimensions compare the two different yarns that i've tried and say our goodbyes and here he is in his completeness or i guess i should say her completeness her name is doxy after my great grandma spoiler alert <laughs> the for, the full story about that though is in the blog post if you want to check it out i love how cute this one is i have a very sweet picture of my daughter holding a handful of these when she was like three years old. It's one of my most favorite pictures I've ever taken of her and she happened to be holding three of my doxy chickens. Let's measure this guy and see how big she is and then we will compare her to my white chicken which was made with Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. I got my measuring tape and she is about, let's see, if we're measuring from the top of her comb all the way down to her feet, we're looking at about seven and a half inches. And then for width, I squished her down real hard. Four and a quarter. Four inches and a quarter for width. Now let's compare her to the I Love This Yarn chicken. She looks like she's a smidge bigger. Like I said too, this is acrylic, which stretches when it gets stuffed. Cotton doesn't stretch as much, so that could have a lot to do with it. Let's measure the white one and see how she turned out and I'm measuring from the middle comb and I'm just pushing over the third comb so it's out of the way. She is oh, about seven and three quarters, very close to eight inches. So a smidge bigger. Let's try her width uh, about four and a half, but four and three quarters maybe. Yeah, four and three quarters wide. So a smidgy bigger made with I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. They both turn out beautifully. You can use any yarn you want. You can even get really creative and use Bernat Blanket Yarn and make a giant doxy chicken, which would be really fun and is on my crochet bucket list. If you make one of these pretty gals, I would love to see it. You can use the hashtag doxy chicken on social media and I will see it. 
Also, go ahead and give me a follow while you're over there. I share crochet business tips, free crochet patterns, all kinds of things on my social media at A Crafty Concept. As always, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if free crochet patterns and crochet business tips tickles your fancy. I will see you in the next video. Have an amazing day. Bye!